Glad to see you. About that recipe? Yes, you want to buy it? What's the recipe for that potion you were talking about? You mean for coloring the water? Ah, oh, well... Well? Pay close attention now. I'm all ears. How love turned to bloodshed. Once there was a knight who, though upright and noble-looking, had a prickly, unapproachable appearance. He fell in love with a fragile young maid, whom he saw with her sisters in a field, all wearing bright red wimples. But he was afraid his prickly exterior would frighten her. So he asked the advice of another knight, a pious and learned crusader, who carried the name of the patron saint of his order with pride. The pious knight told him he would arrange a rendezvous with the maid. All three would drink wine together by the river, and he would help his friend to get acquainted with her. This they did, but the maid fell in love instead with the pious knight. The stern knight was enraged and challenged his rival to a duel. The two fought long and fiercely, but they were equally matched. And so, in the end, they both fell mortally wounded. Anguished at the tragedy her beauty had caused, the young maid took a dagger from one of the knights and plunged it into her own heart. Their bodies lay together on the ground, and the blood flowed from them into the river, turning the waters crimson. I thought you were going to tell me the recipe, not some fable. Well, it is the recipe. I mean, the recipe is concealed in the story. What on earth for? So I don't forget it. All right. So what does it mean? I can't remember. Great. So if you don't know... Who does? You'll figure it out, my loyal apprentice. I remember there are three plants in the story, but that's about all. But I know it was a simple recipe. It should be enough to grind the ingredients and brew them together for one turn. So all you have to do is work out what the ingredients are from story. Sure. Why make things simple if you can complicate them? See you later.
So, how am I doing so far? Good work, Henry. The whole village is shaking in its boots. Soon, people won't step outside the door without saying three Hail Marys. Ugh, I'm glad to hear it. I'm beginning to feel haunted myself. Everyone is talking about how all the butcher's meat went off after being touched by the hand of evil. What, does this look like the hand of evil to you? No one in Ledechko would eat a single egg, even if they had any. Because all the hens are hexed. Well, at least they've got fuel for their fires. The baths are closed. No one will tell you why. But everyone is clearly frightened. Half the village is without rosaries. Someone even wanted to buy one from me. And did you sell it? I don't trade in such banal goods. But I sold him a cat's paw. I didn't know a cat's paw was good for warding off revenants. Henry, all the goods I have are good for warding off revenants. So, the job is done, eh? Uh, not quite. But you just said the whole village is shaking with fear. Uh, the whole village, but for one individual. Well, surely that doesn't matter. That's what I thought, too. Only... This fellow is giving everyone the benefit of his wisdom. He needs shaking up before he undoes your good work. But if he's not been scared yet, what more can I do to frighten him? Well, when he's not hanging around here ruining my trade, he's in the tavern boasting that he'd happily sleep by that empty grave to prove there's no revenant. Yeah, I bet he would. Exactly. He just needs a little persuasion. And once he's there, make it the most terrifying night of his life. Well, what are we waiting for, then? It's best to be well prepared. You ought to find out something about him, so there's no surprises. The gossip woman? Naturally. And Henry... Before we get to that grave, you can still try and come up with more ways to frighten the villagers. The more terrified they are, the more groshen they'll be in it for me. Uh, for us, that is. Take care. Well, what about the dead man's remains? You still have them? No, you said to keep them. What do I do with them now? I'll buy them from you. What on earth for? The bones of a revenant. Those can be valuable goods. What do you say? All right. I'll sell them to you. Splendid. Revenant bones. They'll be very useful indeed. Goodbye. You could at least dress decently before showing your face in public. Good wife. You're still here, lad. I thought you'd have fled by now. Fled? Why on earth would I do that? Because there's a revenant on the prowl. The whole village is talking about it, and everyone is terrified. Ah, that. But I heard there's one brave lad who's not afraid. You mean Felix? Well, I don't know what his name is, but he's always arguing in the tavern that there's no revenant. That's him. The fool doesn't believe what's going on under his own nose. He hasn't the sense he was born with. He even said he'd spend the night at the graveside, just to prove there's no revenant. Aye. All talk and no action. Is he brave or just stupid? Surely he's afraid of something. I couldn't tell you. But if he's to be believed, he doesn't fear the devil himself. And do you believe him? Well, it's true he never seems bothered by anything. But then he's always with that other pair. What pair? Two mates of his. But he was alone in the tavern. Aye, they're not locals. But outside the village, wherever he goes, they go with him. Who are these two fellas? They're not bad lads, but they're no heroes, that's for sure. How's that? Them two have their fears, but then who doesn't? What are they afraid of? 
The first one wouldn't even go into the woods alone because he's afraid of wild animals. Ah, is that so? I wonder why. He got lost in the forest as a young lad and he wasn't found till next morning. Shaking and pale as a ghost he was when they found him. Poor lad. Must have been scared out of his wits. That he was. And what about the other one? He's afraid of fire. Why? His own father burned him. God forgive him. As a young lad, he was playing with fire and nearly set fire to the house. So his pa taught him a lesson he wouldn't forget. Poor lad. That's a terrible way to teach a child. My words, exactly. Oh, it's been an interesting chat. Thanks, good wife. This brave fella, Felix his name is, if we can get him to spend the night at the grave, he won't be alone. Wherever he goes, he always has two mates tagging along. Hmm. Like he's afraid to be alone? Hmm. Could be. So, if we could get him there alone, it shouldn't be too hard to scare him. Well, maybe, maybe not. He claims he's not afraid of anything. That's easy to say. I'm not so sure. Only, we have to get rid of the other two. What do you know about them? One of them is afraid of wild animals. Won't even go into the woods on his own. I see. And the other one? Well, he's afraid of fire, but I doubt an ordinary campfire would do the trick. Well, we'll think of something. Anyway, you take care of the first one. How, though? Haven't you learned anything from me? Talk to a dog. Uh, of course. Why didn't I think of that? Any particular one, Master? Oh, the most frightening one, of course. And how am I supposed to recognise him? One looks the same as another. By his bark, naturally. Can't you hear him? He'd scare the wits out of anyone. That's a dog. Either that or Satan in the guise of a beast. All right. And what do I do with him? Have a conversation with him and see if you can mimic his bark. Yeah, great idea. People will think I'm barking mad. Good luck, then. <coughs> Come on, then. Bark. <coughs> beast you are. All right, let's see. Ruff. Ruff. Again. Officially, the village idiot. So, how did you get on? I found that mutt. Although from the noises it made, you'd hardly guess it was a dog. So you've learned to bark? I have, Master. So bark? I never thought I'd stoop so low. Bo! Bo! Perfect! But what if it's not enough? Ah, ye of little faith. Besides, can you think of any other way? If we want to have him there on his own, I could always knock the other two out. And what if he finds them unconscious? I can always haul them off somewhere he won't find them. Just make sure you don't botch it, Henry. It could easily turn very sour. Don't worry. But what about the other fellow? Ah, oh, yes, apprentice. You have the good fortune to witness a genius at work. Watch and learn. An oil lamp. An oil lamp? Precisely. Isn't it ingenious? A marvellous invention, I grant you. But what do you want to do with it? That's the clever part. 
I've hung a lamp like this over the revenant's grave. All you have to do is shoot it down. It'll fall on the grave and burst into flames. Well, that could work. Only... Only what? Well, how can you be sure I'll manage to shoot it down? I believe in you, Henry. You're my apprentice, versed in the ways of our craft. Right. I almost forgot. Anyway, you can practice. The lamp is already hanging up. It just hasn't been lit yet. Aye. Right. I'll give it a go. And then what? Then you just have to goad our Felix into putting his money where his mouth is. But what if he doesn't fall for it? Refusing would ruin his credibility. Go and see him. I'll bet you anything, if you present it right, he'll jump at it. All right. I'll give it a try. Good. Don't delay, though. Practice with the lamp first, if you like, or just go straight to him. So, how am I doing so far? Henry, a corpse was found. What? Where? Here in Ledechko. The whole village is in a flap over it. Well, what happened? One of the locals was killed. I see. Does anyone know who did it? No one saw or heard a thing. People are terrified. They think it's the work of the Revenant. Well, that's convenient, though, isn't it? It is, but it certainly doesn't give me any joy. I hope you didn't have anything to do with it. Of course not. What do you take me for? I don't know whether to believe you or not. Come on. Do you take me for some cutthroat? My own parents were killed, and I wouldn't wish that loss on anyone. Of course. Uh, sorry, I shouldn't have doubted you. That's all right. So all the villagers are frightened? Well, they certainly are. Good. The more frightened they are, the better. Maybe then you'll sell lots of remedies, and maybe you'll share some of the profits with your loyal apprentice. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> I've heard there's a revenant haunting these parts. Ah, you don't want to believe those old wives' tales. Well, it's not true, then. Of course not. It's just a lot of fairy tales. You're kind of sure of yourself, aren't you? That I am. And what's it to you? Nothing. It's just that, well, bold talk doesn't prove anything. Are you saying I'm lying? Well, can you prove your claims? What? Well, supposing you spent the night at that grave, like you say. That'd prove there's no revenant, wouldn't it? You reckon so? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, for sure. Besides, since you're so fearless, it'd be nothing to you, right? Aye, that's right. How about something to buck up your courage? Nah, probably not. You don't need it. I don't, but it can't hurt. Thanks, then. So when are you going to do it? Just as soon as I can in the evening. Right. And now you can... <laughs> Shh! Quiet, Henry. You'll give us away. <laughs> Sorry. What's that you're wearing? What do you think it is? I don't know. Some new fashion? It's my Revenant costume, of course. <laughs> My apologies, Master, for not recognising it immediately. You obviously still have a lot to learn. So did they come? Yes, all three. They're camping at the top of the hill. Right. I'll have time to get haunting, then. Where do I start? I'll leave that up to you. The main thing is to scare off the two cronies first. I'll take care of fearless Felix. So I'll scare one off with the lamp? Yes, just make sure no one sees you shooting. And the other one with fearsome noises. That will probably take a few attempts. Uh, ideally, a bit at a time. Let him work up an appetite for more, so to speak. I couldn't have put it better myself. Just don't give yourself away. I won't, but if they do happen to see me coming... Then you'd better vanish like a wisp of smoke. 
or make some excuse. And what will you be doing? I'll wait somewhere out of the way for a while, and then I'll crash in. So make sure the other two are gone by then. All right. That noise again. What the? Oh, probably nothing. Oh, no, not again. No, please, God, no. I can't stand this. No, no, please, no. They're everywhere. They'll devour me. Jesus Christ, I've got to get away from here. One something! How did you like that, eh? Wonderful! I haven't had so much fun since I dressed up as the Pope! <laughs> did you see him run? Like all the demons of hell were on their heels. <laughs> One was quite enough, evidently. So what now? Now I just wait for my customers to turn up. Come and see me tomorrow before noon, and you'll get your well-earned reward. My dear apprentice, how happy I am to see you. So, it all worked out then? Like a dream. I didn't sell half as much in Sasau. That's good news. Now, about that thing you promised me. Your well-deserved reward, certainly. Here you have it. Henry, what have you done? What do you mean? I did what you asked. Didn't you overdo it a, a bit? I don't know, why? Because I was left with nothing. They descended on me like a plague of locusts and made off with everything I had. But that's a good thing, isn't it? I'm not saying it's not. Just whether you didn't get a little carried away. Well, if I did, it was only out of loyalty to my esteemed master. What will you do now? I could go now. I've coin enough, but I'll wait. Why? I thought you didn't want to stay too close to Sasau for long. But 
what if you needed my help? Indeed. How could I forget all you've done for me? Well, at least I'll know where to find you.